described as a case of a patient who presented initially at an out, to an outside institution with chest discomfort and was found to be in ventricular tachycardium with a reduced ejection fraction. Repeat echocardiogram performed in our emergency department reaffirmed the reduced ejection fraction as well as evidence of bilateral ventricular dilation. Repeat ECG at this juncture showed evidence of right bundle branch block and features of an acute anterior septal infarct. That said, on physical examination, the patient appeared to not be in acute distress and was a nodal AF fibrotic. There were, was laboratory evidence of elevated pro BNP and troponin T. However, coronary angiography showed no evidence of significant stenosis. The patient was returned back to normal sinus rhythm after administration of amiodarone and metoprolol, and for secondary prevention, a cardioverter defibrillator was implanted. Cardiac MRI subsequently performed showed features of acute myocardial infarction involving the anterior, anterior aspect of the interventricular septum and the anterior basal wall. A, an, endo, an endomyocardial biopsy was attempted, however, uh, was inadequate at sam of its sampling of myocardium. The patient was discharged, but unfortunately represented one month later with symptomatology associated with reduced ejection fraction. Two weeks later, the patient would undergo a heart transplantation. The native heart that was explanted revealed involvement of, with a giant cell myocarditis centered upon the interventricular septum. There was also features of fibrosis suggesting chronicity to this inflammatory uh, process. Five months post-transplant, the course has been complicated by uh, pneumonia and episode of rejection. However, subsequent biopsies have shown resolution of the rejection. This case was unique in its presentation of giant cell myocarditis in that most cases present with a fulminant, uh, with fulminant heart failure as opposed to features of ischemia or uh, arrhythmia.